My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins and for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Jesus asked him, What is your opinion, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take tolls or census tax? From their subjects or from foreigners? When he said from foreigners, Jesus said to him, Then the subjects are exempt, but that we may not offend them, go to the sea, drop in a hook, and take the first fish that comes up. Open its mouth, and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them for me and for you. Today, Lord Jesus, in the gospel, we can be somewhat confused as to the point you're trying to make. Because much like the disciples who you just had told that you were to be handed over to men and that they would kill you, and then you would be raised on the third day, we can be overwhelmed. They were overwhelmed with grief, but we can be overwhelmed similarly because we might not understand fully what it is that you're trying to tell us in this second half of the gospel. Because if the subjects were to pay the temple tax because they would go and they would offer sacrifice and they would pray there and they would be expected to contribute to the temple. Why would you ask Simon Peter about the census taxes or the tolls that would be taken and whom that they would be taken from? But really, I think it's meant for us to really understand something deep and profound here that actually flows from this first half of the gospel. Because when Peter replies from foreigners, you respond to him, then the subject are exempt. Then what you're really saying is that both you and Simon are not required to pay this tax, but that we may not offend them. Go to the sea, drop in a hook and take the first fish that comes up, open its mouth and you will find a coin worth twice the temple tax. Give that to them for me and for you. Because you pay the temple tax. But what you're really saying is that we are foreigners. That earth is not our home. That really, when you are raised on the third day, you will be in a real way showing us that you're ultimately leading us to our heavenly home. And we can't get that fully. We are overwhelmed We can imagine if this is what we're hearing from Jesus, our grief would overwhelm us as well. But so that we may be comforted, you provide enough for us. You pay for the both of us. You are the one who makes reparation. You are the one who makes full payment on our behalf to God. So that we may enter our heavenly home. So that we are not foreigners, but subjects, sons and daughters of our heavenly home. How beautiful is that? That you who are the law, abide by the law in humility as a witness to us. And you don't wish to offend, so you will go along with the law while trying to teach us a very deep and valuable lesson. That we are to follow you, you who paid what we owed, what we could never hope to pay for, you paid it for us. You paid off our debt to God, the debt of our sin, the debt of our selfishness, the debt that we could never hope to pay for because we cannot make full reparation because we can't even begin to understand just how deeply our sins offend you our sins sadden you and you pay for everyone because you don't need to pay yourself you are god you are free from sin but you pay the debt for everyone anyway you do not need to be held bound to the price that we need to pay for our sins for even the original sin 
but you pay it anyway out of love for us. You go to Calvary out of love for me and for each and every one of us. But how beautiful is it that you even go a step further. You use something familiar to Peter. He made his living by fishing. So for him to drop in a hook and get one fish might be no problem. That might be a super easy task that you were asking of him. But then you were showing him that you were calling him to something greater. That even though he made his living by fishing now, he was still called to heaven. And he would pay the temple tax. He would share in your passion. He would pay, in a sense, his own temple tax. You called him from something familiar to something new. You called him from fishing for fish to fishing for men, for souls. You called him to imitate you. You called him to share in your passion. And even though Peter didn't fully know that he would be like you in this way, he still laid down his life. Even though in his being overwhelmed with grief, he would deny knowing you three times. He would reject when you said that you were going to go to Jerusalem to be rejected and crucified. Right after you had affirmed his testimony of you being the son of God, Jesus, through St. Peter, you teach us a beautiful lesson. Remind us that our home is in heaven. You're inviting us to share, to participate in your passion and so be able to enjoy the same reward. And you want to share this with us. We are not exempt from paying this price. You allow us to participate in it with you. So that we have some reason to strive for virtue. We have some reason to daily strive to grow in holiness. To draw ever closer to you every single day. So we try to continue that today, Lord. You call us from what's familiar. You call us from our ordinary life, our ordinary routines, and you call us to raise them up to a level of holiness. You call us to follow you, to sanctify everything that we do in our daily lives, to see how you are working even in and through them. You allow us to share in your life completely. By the grace of our being baptized into new life with you, you allow us to follow you all the way to heaven. Please, God. So may we not be overwhelmed with grief and fall into hopelessness, fall into despair, just give into distractions to let life just kind of pass us by. May we follow you all the way to heaven. And through the intercession of St. Peter, may we struggle day after day to understand just how deeply you love each and every one of us, how you paid this price for me and for all of us. You paid the tax, the debt that I could never hope to pay. The only debt that needs to be forgiven now is the debt of my sins. And so my sharing in your passion is a great grace, a great gift, because it's how you love me into heaven, essentially. Because I know that I need to be forgiven. And so like St. Peter, can I show you by how I live, by how I love, by my confession of faith, can I show you just how much I love you, how sorry I am for my sins, how much I desire to be with you forever in heaven. So today, Lord, Help us to be your faithful sons and daughters who appreciate, who give thanks for the great gift that you have given us of your passion, of your death, of your resurrection, of the hope that we can have in you because of it for our salvation. And so we trust in you. We want to follow you completely, totally, without any hesitation. You call us from this life that is familiar to us, to the glory of heaven, something that is new to us or will be new to us. You pay the tax for us. 
you allow us to share in your passion so that we may be with you forever in heaven. St. Peter, pray for us that we may have the courage and strength to follow our Lord, to follow in your footsteps as you follow Jesus all the way to heaven. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, inspirations, and affections which you have communicated to me in this time of prayer. I ask your help to put them into effect. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.